There's nothing better than knowing what arouses your father. Laura Piana, I never heard of that. It's because you're too poor to know what that <gasps> is. I use the vomit as lubricant and I finish myself off. Is that what you're saying? She's got huge fucking tits. I know, and that ain't no shit. Yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Satva, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash the shit. Go there and get $200 off any mattress of your choice. I'm a huge fan. I've slept on all of them. You got to try one. And it's one of the best times of the year. It's Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. We love it. Yeah. I love, we love being told when to celebrate each other. Manufactured holidays. <laughs> Are always the best. The commercial ones, especially commercial ones, ones yeah. that you are forced yeah. to make a purchase, and otherwise you are a bad person. Mm -hmm. That's really my well. You're favorite. a bad, bad uh, partner. Yeah. And I have to say, all all truth, truth, truth. Yeah. I, re oh my God, he stepped into my light. Oh. I I resent the holiday as well. Yeah. I don't enjoy it. No, I never have. But if you don't do anything for me, like all I expect is like a bouquet, a I bouquet. Yeah. If you don't do the bare minimum, I do get upset. I think Just do the bare minimum. I do the bare truly. minimum, but yeah. I like you to know yeah. that there is no emotion involved. I am not doing it. <laughs> Um, out of kindness I know or love or anything like that I'm doing it just because you have to participate I'm getting a participation award, award. Yeah. on that day and every year I resent it more yeah well I mean just like I'm expected men are expected to buy stuff girls are expected to put out that and I don't uh. really I don't like to be told when to put out I don't like to be mandated by a holiday. When to, isn't that weird that it's a holiday that tells you you yeah. have to put out? You have well, to fuck today, otherwise you're a piece of shit. Yeah, it's 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 come it's become that. It's morphed into that, you know. You have to fuck. And yeah. if you don't have somebody to fuck, then you're a loser. Yeah, I mean, and if like if you don't get flowers, you're a loser. If if you don't get yeah. chocolates or whatever, you're a loser. It's, um, it's, I think it's a holiday that makes more people feel bad than yeah. anything. Cause everyone I talk to is like, there's so much pressure. And then if you don't get what you're, you're expecting, you're bummed out, you know, yeah. and single people, it bums out all, everybody. It's a bummer. It's a bummer. Yeah. It's a bummer holiday. It's a bummer holiday. Yeah. I don't, I got, uh, da, la, da. Uh, that being said, we've, mastered the art of not celebrating valentine's day well why don't we um why don't we open the show and then we can share the secrets yeah and here you go for the very special valentine's day week <laughs> here you go yeah look check this out for oh. all your beautiful women oh what's that i'm cooling oh yeah i'm cooling guy I'm trying to tell you all now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey. Hey. You know what make me feel good? I know. Your pussy yeah. and your booty, girl. Yeah. And them drawers. Them little bikini drawers. Oh, yeah, my baby. I'm trying to tell you all now. <laughs> yeah, girl. It's very really cool. Oh, <laughs> it's so cool. Right. <laughs> Don't bring anyone mother to this. Your mama in the fuck is dead! Welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. Welcome to your mom's house. With Tom Segura. Tom Segura. And Christina Pajitsi. Welcome to your mom's house. Ma, 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 ma. Go, 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 Annie, go. Let it out, let it out. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 oh, oh, wow, wow, it's a cool brand. <laughs> hey, Christine. <laughs> um, hey, what's up with your John Deere flex? Oh, thanks for noticing. Dang, that's cool as shit, huh? What you representing, bro? You know why I got it? What? For the people. Oh, you're a man of the people now. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want to see me wearing fucking Laurel Piana. 
You know? I don't even know. Laura Piana. I never even heard of that. That's because you're too poor to know what that <laughs> is. But <laughs> I. <sighs> oh, God. I actually had to look up what that was. I, uh, I'm a regular guy, and uh, <laughs> we like John Deere. <laughs> you know, if I ever get my hands on some money, I'm going to get me an, another one. <laughs> well, that's what Garth does. This is why we love Garth Brooks so much. I just much. drive around on my ranch. He, does, he refuses to be trapped yeah. by money. And the, the comforts. My favorite thing about uh, about him. He lives poor. And the uh, and there's a there's a couple of comedians like this who I won't name, uh, <laughs> who are quite popular. Yeah. Is that they uh, they have been able to uh, trick their fans yeah. into believing that they're like, I, you know, I'm I'm just a I'm a regular dude. Yeah. And I, and I like basic stuff. Yeah, and uh, I'm I'm not I don't fall into the the trappings of yeah. of the wealthy. Uh, I just just doesn't appeal to me. I'm just a I'm a regular guy, and like you know, Garth does that oh, with his time. stuff, where he's just like, <laughs> uh, you know, I no. Just, remember, he he I has just the want ranch. A, I just want a cold cut sandwich yeah. from Jersey Mike's. Yeah, and you're like, okay, yeah, sure. And he drives around his his shitty ranch in his yeah in his, his multi million. And then yeah. I got I just like to drive my F one fifty. Like okay. And a couple okay. of very well-known comics do this thing where they're like, you know, I'm a normal dude. And then they're dumb fucking, pe- there are people dumb enough to be like, oh, just just a regular dude. And they don't know that like those guys, they all fly private. They, all, they just put on this very calculated manufactured thing where they're <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm a regular guy. Yeah. And meanwhile, there's guys like me who are, I'm John Deere all day, every day. Yep. Like this is actually mm. who I am. Guy, he's he sleeps in this. He's got yeah. John Deere pajamas, John Deere undies. Well, it's my favorite thing to to do Represent. at home is I drive around on our yard in my John Deere. Is know? that is that what it is? Is it a lawnmower? I don't yeah. even know what a John Deere is. Yeah, yeah. I'm from LA. Well, we never make, we never mowed lawns. They so. they they do lawnmowers. They and do what tractors. Else do they do, they do, they do yeah, like like, like farm equipment stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's like it's really good stuff. It's a high, high, is it the highest end of, of equipment? It's up there. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I wonder what the artifice of like. It's a game. It's a cycle. It's a yeah. trick. And people either yeah. fall for the trick or they know they're being tricked, you know? Yeah. Now. Or, or when they go on even like talk shows dressed poor and you're like, you, you know that you can, you're on like the Tonight Show. Yeah. You cannot, saying. you can wear like a nice I got my shirt. shit kickers on and. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah. And you're like, but but okay. but it's interesting because certain audiences demand that. Well, here's the thing: they don't. You can say they demand it. What they do is they like to be tricked. They like to buy into the ruse. They like they like to go see. I know he's just got all he's his shit kickers. Guy. Yeah, he's wranglers on, and you're like, he's a regular, regular guy. And you're like, okay. It's funny. I saw this meme that was like, "When we eat the rich, only Dolly Parton will be spared." Oh yeah. And. It's so true because she's obviously super super, wealthy, yeah. Super, but there's something like she's real down home. She lets people sleep in her backyard. I heard, like, I don't know how true that is, but the reason. But that, but I like that mythology. I, I, it's it's, it's, again, it's a, it's a story. It's a bull, yeah. Yeah. And she's always like, I grew up. Here's what's not a story. In a shack. This part is not a story. She's got huge fucking tits. I know, and that ain't no shit. (laughs) Yeah. And speaking of tits, and it's Valentine's Day. And if you want to be a good partner, just fucking lick that pussy to yeah. pieces. You got to go for it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we were fuck partners. God, that is. Rest in peace, Herc. So romantic. Yeah. Wait, yeah. I, we didn't even talk about Unc Shine's cool video of the mop oh, the, and the bucket. So the reason that he is being so sexy towards the mop and the bucket is quite a simple one. He doesn't realize that the camera's <laughs> facing the other way. This is something that happens to Unk every once in a while. Um, <laughs> but it's nice. It's, a, it's nice, though. This has happened to everyone. Most people catch it sooner. Yeah. Uh, he just keeps the video going, which is uh, kind of the best part. But it gives me. Bro, Bray! Oh. What's that in, bro, Bray? <laughs> I like them draws y'all wearing, bro, Bray. Huh? Ah, you can see ah, that you don't see your face, draws. right? 
he the can't. black He's one drunk. and the red one. <laughs> Bro, Bridge. Y'all touch my heart with them little draws, guy. Yeah. Well, it is nice. I like to get insight into his private world and his surroundings. And this is interesting. I, I didn't know that he, this is how he lives. It seems yeah. pretty clean. He's got a mop and a bucket. Yep. He cleans up. Um, I'm surprised the table is free from any beer cans. It's or actually litter. of the coolest guys we've ever profiled. <laughs> 100% that's the cleanest apartment we've ever seen. Yeah. It's I'm, not even close. No, I'm really impressed with Unchai. And here is why. Here is really why. He values fucking so much. Like, mm -hmm. I don't yeah, know how often he gets, gets laid. laid. I know he wants to get laid 24-7. He literally, for I think we've known who this is now for a couple of years, <laughs> posts almost the same thing every day, yeah. which is I want your booty. I want you to sit. I want my tongue in your ass. <laughs> every day, every once in a while, it has to happen. Yeah. And if you really do like ladies, you know something. They don't like a dirty apartment. No. Ladies don't want to walk no. into a mess. I won't, I won't get, I, I once went to a gentleman's apartment um, before we were together uh -huh. and I went to use his restroom and there was just a sea of hair on the floor, just a layer of, of human body hair. You dated pubic hair. Josh Potter before. Me. <laughs> oh my god! I bet that is that is what that it was a Potter sitch. Yeah, and I was like, nah, I'm out. Yeah, but I do like. There's no mold on the ceiling. Yeah, but there's no um, fan. Yeah, anywhere. Yeah. Oh God, poor Josh Potter. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Jesus, I, lo I love Josh Potter. So do I. Who he is. He love is. Josh Potter is literally one of my favorite people that I of know. Of course, he's the best. Yeah. Look at him. He, um, <laughs> shoulder point. Remember when he was doing that? He goes, <laughs> he's like, I can't keep up with these cameo requests for shoulder and foot porn. Was that on the air or was that just what he was telling? Both. I don't forget if he was public with that. But you realize that, you realize that he had to stop making cameos. He said no to money on the and table. This is actually, this is how crazy this was. At the time, <laughs> he really needed the money. He really <laughs> <laughs> and he was like he's like i need money yeah but i can't keep doing shoulder porn i just can't yeah. i can't lower <laughs> yeah. myself to this. and imagine like when we were at our poorest having that treasure trove there and being like no hard pass that must mean it really was killing his his spirit yeah he, he was say, he was saying i'm losing the twinkle in my eye <laughs> <laughs> i'm serious <laughs> Which, uh, we would be on the, we would be on the road together that's very funny. Sorry, you deserve credit for that. <laughs> Thank you. The good eye. Um, but we would be on the road together, and I'd be like, uh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to go get lunch. He's like, I got to shoot some shoulder porn for Cameo. <laughs> so upset. He's like, my whole afternoon's going to be doing this. And I was like, <laughs> All right. He's like, but, you know, it's some good money. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's always hard as an artist. Do we take the check? Or mm -hmm. do you go for, you know, the hard way, which is yeah. your artistic license and good for him. He's an artist. Yeah. yeah. He's a real fartist. He's a real fartist. Uh, he's doing great now, by the way. Like, I know. Podcast is doing great, doing road dates, just like he's fucking doing fantastic. Our little baby bird has flown he and he's flying took high. off, flew away. Yeah. We, uh, that's really exciting. I'm really yeah. happy for him. I'm really proud of Josh Potter. He's really done it. He really has. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if he has a valentine. Yeah. By the way, it is pronounced Valentine, so don't write in and tell me. That it's Valentine? It's never Valentine. I mean, this might be, a, before we get into some of the details of how to make Valentine's Day um, more tolerable. Um, hey, Christina. Uh, I just want to <laughs> point out that thanks to you guys um, and suggesting that my I'm Coming Everywhere World Tour <laughs> be about actually coming places well the messages have come in yeah and uh, it is interesting hey tom um <laughs> i knew you were in louisiana you probably came in a disrespectful way out of spite give me those cum deets come here now jess uh tom tell me the most <laughs> untraditional cum you had on the tour outdoors in a plane in a car i want that cool cum slick cum neat cum <laughs> Gary the cum bear. Well, 
I have admitted that I jerked yeah. off on multiple flights for the first time in my life on That's this interesting. tour. That's yeah. interesting. May I ask why you choose the flight over just the hotel room where you're, sed you're sedentary? Well, I discovered a few things about myself. Mm. Um, one, uh, something I've known for a while is that I get um, sexually aroused on flights. Okay. And um, I looked, we've discovered, we've discussed it on Two Bears a number of times and found that this is actually not a rare thing that a lot of people or a number of people experience this. That it's something about losing your inhibitions, um, feeling a total loss, like lack of, you're no longer in control, your stress is relieved, and sometimes that heightens um, sure, arousal. I can see that. Um, yeah, so um, I, I did it a few times. Are you saying you've done this too? When I was like, when I was a kid, like, like, I want to say like high, like early high school, middle high school. We're on a flight to Israel. To Longi. And I am sitting with my sister and my mom. And then all of a sudden something happens where I'm like, I got to get this demon stuff out of me. Yeah, it's stress relief. And so it's like it's a trip to Israel. So it's a 12-hour flight. So all the windows are down. I'm like, oh, everyone's asleep. This is good. And I go to the bathroom and like I need visual stuff to yeah. do things. And so I'm trying my hardest to like think Just, of stuff. Yeah. And like it takes me a while. And when oh. I come out, there's a line of like 10 angry people like, oh my what, what the God. fuck were you doing in there? <laughs> and I'm like, they could probably hear the fapping, you know? I'm 13. I'm a man now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> was it a good one though? One of the best comes of my life. I'm going to throw it. Please never I, share a story again. That was so disturbing. I, um, I think I ended up doing it three times on this tour. And obviously private, right? When you're flying private. Mm. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, commercial? No, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It was, it was, it was, it was private. Gosh. It well, it is private. your uh, plane. I had dri literally, I had driven my John Deere tractor to the plane. <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, I did it. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I was compelled. I did it. And I felt great. Really, I don't know. So. When you walk out, are you worried that the others will know your secret? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Some people think that's part of the thrill. I didn't, I didn't find that thrilling. Yeah. So that, that part wasn't it to me. I just got get this heightened sense of arousal on a plane. Yeah. I mean, I understand your, yeah. your anxiety is a little higher. Maybe it's just, it's a different universe. Yeah. I remember when nine 11 happened, all I wanted to do was F. That's I told, really? Same thing. Like heightened. What, what do I do? Am I going to die? Trauma. I should fuck. I should fuck. Yeah. But that was, yeah, maybe trauma. Yeah. But with you, I mean, did do you think your passengers, your co-passengers knew? Like, did all your tour buddies sense? No. That you were jerked knew. off? Yeah, no. they just, like, you took a shit. No, no. I remember telling one of them, like, the next day, and they were like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I don't even want to know if you've done it on a flight with me. Mm. With our kids? No. Ugh. I didn't even get aroused. No, of course not. Yeah, that's so gross. No. Um, I don't want to know when you jerk off. Like, I don't. I don't want to, I don't want to walk in on it. Yeah. I really don't want to know. Yeah, when. you have never I'm not interested. any interested in that at all. That's no. your private time. Yeah. I don't know, you know, just kind of, you've never wanted to watch um, any guy, JSD? I haven't wanted to, but I have <laughs> uh, over my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I had this happen in high school. We spent the night. God, this was so deranged at my friend's house in like 10th grade. And she had a really whacked out little brother. There's a, always one of those. And he was cutting holes into stuffed animals and effing them. He had put a camera in her shower. Like this kid was just other level. Yeah. You know what he's not doing now? Something good with his life. No, yeah. he was, he was already like serial killer. Yeah. And anyway, uh, she had a slumber party. We were all up the next was it, I think it was no at nighttime. And he was like laying in her bed and he was like watching us talk. And he's like, Hey, you guys dare me to jerk off. And we were like, whatever, you know, Steve. And we're just continued discussing what we're discussing. And then he fucking has jizz and he flicks it on her wall. And we were like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Like we were all like, ew. Like she was so mad. She was hitting him. Yeah. I'm going to come. Now. Yeah. That was, that was pretty gnarly. That was, Probably, but then like a litany of homeless guys. I've always seen homeless guys like on buses or in tunnels and stuff. Yeah. That's standard issue. Yeah. He loves his cum. Yeah. I, um, happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. Mm. That was a weird one because I know that that was 
that was way degenerate behavior. And they were like a well-to-do family. Really? Oh, yeah. Wealthy. And he, yeah. And then that's, I don't know, that stands out, right? When it's like. A, he, that's, that's other level stuff. Like he didn't know boundaries. So there's a, there's a kid I knew in high school. He wasn't in my grade. I think he was one or two years younger than me. And he was an odd, like just an oddball, yeah. you know? And I was in a, sm this was when we moved. So I went from a really big high school to a small high school. And he was, you could just tell, you know, this is a weird guy. He's weird. Um, he had this, carried a brush with him oh, and uh, would brush his hair in this very like specific way. And he had bat, he had weird, like a shitty hair style. And he was always like, <laughs> brushing it and we were always like do you have your fucking brush with you know we're high school kids like yeah. you got your brush yeah you know and making sure that he's had brushed enough and asking him questions because we knew his answers would be straight he's just strange you know yeah. like feels like you know not like cutting holes and things like you said but you're like this guy's just off and you know we would kind of have our fun of like it was mostly about asking him questions right like it setting him up with some question and hearing his just yeah, bananas like kind of answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, everybody's it's one God. of those things where you kind of just turn your head and you're like, this guy's just fucking off yeah. his shit. But like I said, he's a couple years younger. So I don't see him all the time. I kind of know who he is in high school. Move on. But you know, every few years you talk to your friends, you're like, how about, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah. And just, We'd have our friend like, do you have your fucking brush with you to brush your hair right now? Um, more time goes on. And then like more than a decade later, find out that he got arrested for stalking. And yeah. And you're like, that checks out. Like that's, yeah. that's exactly who, like following somebody staring through the window, you know, I think still brushing his hair. Yeah. Outside, like, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But see, here's the deal, man, is like, I wonder if you guys kind of check in him, which is what men do. You 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 check him, meaning like, hey asshole, yeah, I'm on you, fuckface. You're fucking weird. Yeah. Me and the other guys are gonna keep an eye on you so that you don't totally whack out. But now with this whole no bullying and everybody's awesome and um we have to celebrate the weirdos instead yeah. of you know, hey, I'm watching you, weirdo, which is, I think, a little more helpful, right? Because who knows how far he would have gone. Oh, I think he should have been checked harder. I, I actually, right. don't th I don't think we actually checked him enough. I think we were like a lot of high school kids in that we were amused by somebody that was so different in that way. Sure. I mean, he wasn't different like the, in the way that like a foreign exchange student's different. He was, you, we were just like, we never met somebody like him. Yeah, you know, there was no other kid like him. So I think we were just like, the fuck is up with this, right? It was like, I don't know, it was almost like a toy of some kind where you're just like, is this really how this works? I um, and I, w I, think, I think he would have been served better <laughs> by what you're saying, which is like us like being like, knock it the fuck off, yeah. you know? I, I think, I, I wish we would have done that. I know because not everybody, how do I put this? Not everybody is fixable yeah. or is within the parameters of normal societal behavior. Yeah. Maybe there's no fixing that guy. There's no fixing that. Yeah. The, who knows what wires were crossed from but the jump? Maybe he wouldn't have done any of that weird shit if he would have had his ribs cracked, you know? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, that is a hundred percent what I am fucking saying. Is and we could have done that, believe me. That's what like, I'm yeah. <laughs> we could have fucking wrecked his life. We should have hospitalized that kid. God, that's yeah. what I'm yeah. saying. You should yeah. have gone harder on the yeah. kid. Oh, yeah. a little teasing. No, 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 no. Yeah. Hey, fuck face. Really put him in his place. Shame him so that yeah. he stays inside. Yeah. That's what you need. That's old school. Remember, I mean, this is how it was back in the day. Everybody knew the weirdos in the neighborhood. Yeah, the, yeah. Right? And back in the day, everybody would full metal jacket that kid, you know? <laughs> they would fucking beat that kid until his fucking brain worked differently. <laughs> and so that's what you need to do. Whenever you see a kid that's kind of weird, just fuck him up. Push him yeah. around. It's yeah. true. But I mean, not, not just like a little weird. Like, yeah. I brush my hair. I'm fucking not right in the head weird. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 
He wasn't probably just R worded. He there was something creepy. What, what that kid needed is what Joey Diaz calls. He needed a fucking reset. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He, need, he really needed a reset. <laughs> you know. He either needed a thousand milligram star of death or to get <laughs> every fucking bone in his body broken. You know? Because this is something that only men can do to other men. Yeah, is true. You guys regulate each other because men operate on a primal animal level that women do not fucking comprehend. Yeah. Okay, there's a reason that men are the serial killers. Yes, there's the outliers that some every now and one every fucking thousands of killers. One is a woman. I told you we did this in college. What did you do? In college. I, I'm sure I've, I've told it on a podcast before that when I was a freshman in college i was in the freshman dorm and we heard that down the hall on our hall there was a guy who's a freshman who had a 14 year old girl with him Ooh, in the room maron. so we went down there like four of us went down there and and we and he was like hey what's up guy he was like what's eh, up normal yeah and we were like this isn't happening and he was like what are you talking about and we're like this isn't happening like she's got to go yeah what's going on he was like what and we're like not happening yeah and he was he was kind of like um you're kind of fucking me up right now we were like no shit because you're not going to do this and so the girl leaves he's all like you know he can't believe that this just happened he was gone the next week he left school good yeah of course because because of what God, like it was to regulate it was other. basically a bunch of men who yes. were all bigger than him going like yes. you're not going to do this yes and then he just i mean who knows what he i'm sure he ended up being a predator of some kind somewhere, but he wasn't <laughs> going to do else, it on our hall, a, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. But that's what, see, but some men are so wild and so yeah. untamed yeah. that they're not going to respond to reason and to seminars and to sexual harassment, no. um, sit downs. That's not going to happen with some creeps. Well, they no. need a fucking And this a is fist. something that's that actually it. has been proven in psychology about psychopaths and i've read oh, well, a you're an of expert books. on that we know i've read a pro and I'm, I'm not an expert but i i think for a novice i've you know i've read about six or seven books i believe i've you. watched a number of shows yeah and there's something that they'll, they'll tell you over and over again about psychopaths they do not respond to reason thank you psychopaths yeah respond to force yeah so when a yes. guy's in there and he's trying to be you know aggressive you know what he responds to I will smash your fucking head wide open with a hammer. Yep. And then that guy goes, oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah, exactly. Force. Yeah. And, and But that's the problem with now with toxic masculinity and blah, blah, blah. Men are being told that that's a toxic trait. Like, no, no, no. no. Nature in some regard is off and evil. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Nature is fucking evil. There are things. There are that things that, are, that happen in the world. People like to admit. Yes. And that evil is happens. That, like, creeps. Creeps are fuck. <sighs> need to be checked. Yes. Bullies need to get bullied back. Yes. And gays, you have to pray for them. <laughs> they, they can't stop. If you don't pray for a gay, they'll never see the light. They'll never see the light. Mm. God, you're so smart, man. So. <sighs> I'm so glad we solved all the world's fucking problems. Well, that's what we do here. Um, all right. Breaking news. Manscaped is now selling beard products. That's right. They've gone from waist to face to help you replace that bulky razor with their brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Manscaped help you get the golden rod of a Greek god. And now they've created the best tools for you to turn heads with a clean, perfectly groomed and conditioned beard. Finally, tame your mane by going to manscaped.com and using our code MOM for 20% off plus free shipping. Uh, my husband is super into the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, and it shows he looks clean and high and tight. This kit is about to change your life. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit has made it easier than ever to craft your signature look. It all starts with the Beard Hedger. This waterproof cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths, all with one guard, so no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. The kit also includes a titanium-coated T-blade beard shampoo and conditioner, beard oil, beard balm, and three free gifts. So get 20% off and free shipping with our code MOM at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use our code MOM, the Manscaped Beard Hedger Pro Kit, the premier solution to face grooming. Valentine's Day. Hugely gay retarded holiday that is uh, popular here in the retarded. United States. 
But one way um, to make it oh, tolerable layer. for you as a man, I'll tell uh, you this, uh, like, I've, you know, sure. I've had girlfriends during high school, college, out of college. I've been married. Can't enough bragging no, no, about I'm saying how many women Every me. Valentine's Day is a Valentine's Day that you have to acknowledge if you're with someone. Um, if you're alone, people try to make you feel bad and you shouldn't feel bad because it's a fucking bullshit thing. And you know what I mean? If you're yes. single, it's like, that fucking, who gives a shit? Do, do something fun that day and realize that everybody else is being a sucker for this commercial holiday. But if you're in a relationship, here's what you need to do. If you're a guy, use the opportunity to eat where you want to eat, actually. Mm. And what you do is you present it as, there's this place I really want to take you, mm. the girl. But what you really do is you go somewhere that you want to eat. Such a good okay? idea. And and you just you just have to be not foolish enough to talk about that place over and over leading up to the day. Right. But when the day comes up, you go, ah, I got a real special treat for you. Yeah, for you. I want to take you to Jimmy's Meat House or whatever the Hold fuck on. is can't, the place you want to go but to. You got to be respectful of the, the lady because here's yeah. the deal, man. She spent a long time getting ready. Sure. She don't want fucking barbecue sauce on her dress. She doesn't okay. want to eat with her hands. You got to take her somewhere that's like, you have to think about the type of food. You do, but make sure you don't do it for her. Do it for yourself. That's the <laughs> point I'm trying to make. Like, don't fall into the trap of being like, person. here's the fucking, you know. You wish, I, you wish I was 400 pounds instead of you. Be, no, you wish you would be 400 pounds. So you didn't have to look at me. To look at me. I think about it now. I've been thinking about it yeah. for like days that you chose to, like, I didn't realize you were that into looks that you didn't want me to be 400 pounds. I really didn't realize. You never came across as a guy that was really into looks. Okay. No, well, I didn't the, know. Here's the thing. I mean, look, I'm not. The here's, here's the thing that you're right about. Um, and and it, it's good that it, you've come to the realization. If you were 400 pounds, I'd never look at you again. So. <laughs> yeah. You just never see my eyes in your direction. <laughs> You'd be waiting for search and rescue to come and get you. You are you. so unreal. Yeah. You are unreal. Uh, another huge. Hot bit, tip. Hot tip. We've been saying this one for, for years. years. You fuck, fuck before, before you, you eat. eat. Huge mistake fuck people have made. Fuck before you eat. Sometimes fuck they're like, you, you get all dressed up, I right? Know. And like, oh man, clothes isn't too tight yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a little appetite going. I yeah. can't wait to go here. Yeah. Let's eat. And then we'll have our romantic, loving then, moment after yeah. we get back. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Because you're too drunk yeah. and full. And full. You're too full. You too ever full fuck, to fuck and have your partner puke? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, have you? Yeah, I remember that. I what rem do you mean you remember uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> Not with me in the last 20 years. No, I know. But I remember in college, um, ate too much. She ate too much. And we're doing it. She throws up. Oh, right? While you're fucking? Yeah, but she's in the dog, so... You know, she's facing away. Stop. She's You're puking lying. off the bed. Stop. I go, I'm not top I'm not tapping out till I'm done, right? So Stop. I Stop. I'm I'm done. I use the vomit as lubricant and I finish myself off. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Can't get so. me, bitch. <laughs> Do you see that? Can I tell you something? Our younger son is such a puker. Like I yeah. you know how like the universe conspires to get you over things or to make yeah. you grow? I swear that our youngest son, because he is such a puker, it's has, helping you. It's mar. It's the, the needle is moved for me in the puke he's phobia. So, he's so funny. That kid, he goes, "Do you remember?" He goes, "Do you remember when I barfed?" And I'm like, "Which time?" <laughs> he's like, "When I was sick." But, yeah. you know, I do remember. He's like, "Yeah, I barfed everywhere." And I'm like, "You sure did, pal." He barfed on me on the plane. Yeah. On the way to Thanksgiving and. Yeah, that was, was a new terrible. one for me. It was, was terrible. terrible. But now he's convinced that every time he gets on a plane, he I barfs. Know, he's and I'm like, like, there's no correlation. We were don't worry. On the flight for the holidays, and he was like, <sighs> "Will I barf on this flight?" Oh, like, no, <laughs> oh, so sad. Yeah, it's so fast. Poor buddy. Um, yeah, but I mean, I wonder what new holidays will be manufactured in the next thirty years. You know, if there'll yeah. be a new one, we could make one. We should make one, a better one. Than jeans day. <laughs> you wear your jeans. Yeah, I mean, what's the, let's pick a date. Times Jeans Day. Uh, when is a special day in YMH history? Maybe it's the day that we 
talk to RPC. I feel like that's a huge day. That is a huge day. That's the jeans day. We should, we should, well, it should be out. on a Wednesday, obviously, because everyone should thinks be a that Wednesday. Wednesday is a jeans day. But here's the thing. Okay. So then it's not an actual date because the dates will change every year. I know, I know. So it's got to be on like. So it's like the first Wednesday of every, you know, June, like that kind of thing. <laughs> well, you don't want to wear tight high jeans in the summertime. Okay. You got to wear your high and tights in the winter. So or the like, fall. Or the fall. Autumn is perfect. Autumn weather. is perfect jean yeah. weather. Yeah. So the first Wednesday <laughs> in every, of every October. Ooh, that's good. Is Jeans Day. Jeans Day. And if you don't purchase <laughs> and give someone a pair of, and you don't wear a brand new pair of jeans that day, you are not even a part of society. No, you don't you should, belong. You're an outcast. You're a terrible person. And actually, you should be indicted on federal charges. <laughs> you're a piece of shit. My jeans. I wear yeah. my jeans and my Adidas jacket. Yeah. You no, know, that's um, so funny. This hey, is, yeah. what, go ahead. Guess what I have to do. What? Pee? Okay. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I in the morning. We're filming in the morning. Yeah. It's when I drink coffee and I hydrate a lot. Yeah, I understand. And I drink my shake. But you didn't understand the last episode. You had well, a couple episodes ago, or was it? Was it in front of Tony Hawk and Jason you, Ellis? You let, were, let's you, let's actually let's 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 break this down here. In two episodes, two like big moments. One, I'm sitting here having like that, this insane. That's what you're mad about. Convert no. Listen to the fuck. No, oh, here's the fucking psychology degree over here. <laughs> uh, uh, That's what you're asking. I don't know. I'm an expert. No, I'm talking to fucking Charo about this huge. And you're like, I gotta go pee. And you take off. Then we have Tony Hawk and Jason. Tony Hawk, who you've been a super fan of as long as I can remember. And we're like, man, this is like this great podcast. There's a few minutes left. And you're like, I'm gonna go pee right now. It's like, you can't. Wait a minute to say goodbye. But, I, but it was already bursting. It Actually, was already, it wasn't. You know why? It was. Because you held it. You held it longer. You were able to do photos afterward. So I know, no, I peed and then I did photos. Yeah, you, you could Why don't it. you believe me with yeah, this? Yeah, because I think you're lying. Why would I lie about having to pee? Mm. Can I tell you something? I actually think you're mad at me because I got up and left during that flight. And no. I think you wanted me to bear witness. And I didn't realize it at the time. Okay, that's not why I'm mad at you. I think you can actually hold it a lot longer than you admit to, and you're just being selfish about when you pee. Um, I've had two children. You know that does affect, like, making me pee more and pelvic floor things. And Okay. Well, I think you could have held it. <sighs> I think you're mad at me because I left at a, at a moment that you wanted me to be there, and I did not notice. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you why I left during the charo? I did have to urinate. Mm-hmm. I saw it as a perfect opportunity because I don't like confrontation between you and your mom. I hate watching it. Okay. I hate watching her spin out and do all that stuff because it reminds me of my own life and I don't I didn't want to see it. Can I tell you what I hate? <laughs> I hate when you propose things like here's why I think you feel this way. Okay, fine. That. But then you're still, you've never been mad at me in the past for peeing during a show. Why now? Why this pee? <laughs> you know, you've had many peas on this show. I have. Sometimes you have to pee. Thank you. I, yeah. <laughs> and I do have to go. You want to measure my bladder, you fuck? <laughs> She's full of shit. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm back. And I feel so much better. And see how much happier I am? Yeah, you actually do seem much, much Lighter, better. Lighter. I wish, full. Uh, I, personally, I wish w if you ever had to pee, you would just do it. You know, I don't want you to feel like you. Really? Yeah, of course. Thanks, James. I yeah. love you. Happy yeah. Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, ha happy Valentine's Day. Uh, can I tell you what I'm super stoked to get into? What? The tramp stamps. The submissions. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, I'm genuinely curious as to who has a, a worse or a white worse or tramp stamp than me because mine's pretty fucking terrible. Even this. Jason Ellis, who's got a million bad tattoos, like that shit, man. The best part about that, <laughs> the best part about Jason Ellis talking about it is like when it first appeared on, and you're like, what do you think this is? He's like, this is a fucking piece of shit tattoo. <laughs> How so? 
Oh, he's God. like, this is one of the worst just tattoos I've yeah. ever seen. Didn't says, know what he was. Yeah, it says the expert. He's like, who covered. cares? It just sucks. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. There is your absolutely garbage tattoo. But <laughs> are you going to actually entertain what he suggested? I kind of think it is a good suggestion. So, I mean, Jason Ellis, yeah. if anything, is an expert on tattoos. Yes. And he's just said. You know, he's right. Modern day cover ups are incredible. He's like, just put an awesome tattoo over the shitty tattoo. Or do you go, it's just funnier to have my shitty tattoo and I don't care. Or the third option is just have it removed. Well, yeah, but you've had that option for a long time. I know, and I keep waiting for the technology to get so much better that no, it's No, the painless. technology's there. But is it it's but it still hurts like well, shit. Well look, if you want it to be gone, you're gonna feel something, but you're not gonna be it's not like you're delivering a baby. It's not gonna hurt like that, you know. Oh, that's true. I've done that twice. Yeah. I mean, it's just embarrassing. I don't like my kids to see it. And they've asked me about it. And I'm like, mommy made a bad decision in 1999. And I just tell them that. Or 98. That's what you fucking say to them? Yeah. I'm like, it was a stupid decision. <laughs> mommy made a stupid choice. It's a bad choice. You okay. make bad, dumb choices and you live with bad decisions. So do you think you're just going to leave it as is? No, I, I actively want to do something about it. I don't know if I want to make it bigger. I think I want it gone. I think I want it gone. You know what's sad is that when I had it done, when I was like 20 years old, mm -hmm. in my head I was like, I'll just have it removed later. Really? Yeah. Cause I was did like, I don't you really look at do it this. then and go, this is pretty rad? You think, mm. I mean, did you think it was cool for a minute? I thought it was cool enough, but I wasn't like, this I want on my body for the, like, this yeah. is rad. I did it because everyone else was doing it that day. It was, there were six of us. Yeah. And I was like, this will be a funny story. Like, I was in Australia. This guy has a scorpion tattooed on his face that did it for me. And I was in Brisbane and I was like, whatever, dude. I'm going to get one. Yeah? Yeah. What are you going to get? I don't know. I'll get it with you. Really? Yeah. Let's You'll get, get another tattoo? If it's with my jeans. Okay. What would you get? I don't know. I don't know. I kind of want to get one over my scar for my ankle. I have that a, would be kind of cool. I have a pretty cool scar. I know. Yeah. All right, let's get jeans tattoos. How about two mommies, one jeans, one jean, one pair of jeans? I think if we learned anything, it's that you shouldn't take the lead on the tattoo design. <laughs> I'm not very good with yeah. symbols, no. Um, okay. All right, let's see who anyone else is. We put out the call and we got some submissions back. These are fucking amazing. Okay. First one. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Blazing Nana. Nana or Nana? Nana? N -A -N -A. That sucks. Nana. Nana. Banana. I saw that you're looking for bad <laughs> trans stamps. Well, here's a terrible one. This says, Jesus saves. Oh, 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 that's a bad one. I tried being one of those church people, but I'm already covered in tattoos. So this was my Christian tattoo. So after I kind of quit doing the church thing, I remember a guy asking me, do guys blow baby batter on that tattoo? That's pretty. That's pretty that's good. That's bad. Thank you for sending that. God, that that's is, terrible. Uh, fantastic. But what does it say at the butt crack there? There's like no. more. Can I we can't. zoom in? Uh -huh. I understand that Jesus saves, and then is that like Latin? There's something down I, there. I do think like any type of cross or Celtic cross as so a tramp bad. stamp is yeah. very and bad. And Jesus saves as your tramp Gnarly. stamp. I mean, that is primo. Way to go, Nana. That's that's a heavy. Uh, that's a good one. That might win. <laughs> um, number two here we have. Connor. <laughs> it's a guy. He goes, Hi, Jeans. My name's Connor. Guess from where? <laughs> he has an enormous <laughs> tattoo of the word Alaska on his lower back. I mean, it's oh, huge. That's huge. That is fucking enormous. Said, there's, but, you know, and I don't know. This is another thing about men and women that is, oh. that is different is that like a guy having this is like always funny. So fun. And then a girl having this is just always Poor. regrettable. It's yeah. just sad. You're just like, you got to change this. You got to. Now, here's the, my question though. A tramp stamp, does it have a size? Is there a size thing? Because that, is that considered a. Well, that's the area for it. So. That's the area for it. But a tramp stamp technically well, is technically, just a little yes, or a stamp a smaller. Is, is always, but I mean. This is so the, funny. I mean, my, so my tramp stamp is literally about this, right? A little bit bigger than a half dollar. Something like that. Yeah. You know, you're the one that looks at it more than me. <laughs> I try to not to, but um, that's his entire lower back. That's enormous, but the font is killer. I will say that's yeah. really good calligraphy. It's it well done. It's well done, and he must love 
his that's home state. Funny. Um, that's, pretty that's really <laughs> funny, dude. Connor, Connor from Alaska. It, Connor, dude. who I, I think is from Alaska. Um, <laughs> that's where I'm from. Uh, Jesus. Oh, okay. that's funny. Next up. Oh, Oof. that's bad. This is a guy again. Hey, oh. mommy. So I got this while a little drunk on St. Patrick's Day in 2012. <laughs> I say a little, but I was pretty coherent the entire time. It was only about 11 a.m. after all. I can tell you it hurt like hell. But I didn't pay for a drink for the rest of the night, so I call that a win. If you can't read it, it says, kiss me, I'm Irish. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm or in? No, I, I'm Irish. Okay, no, because the, in the in the email it says in Irish. I didn't know if that was part of the joke. <laughs> Is it right. kiss me in Irish? No, no. it does it says, say I'm. It says I'm Irish, but it also looks like Jewish and not yeah, Irish. I'm yeah. Jewish. Kiss me, I'm Jewish. <laughs> yeah, that looks um, like a J. It's very funny. And no, I... Oh, wait, hold on. It says... If you can't read, it says, kiss me, I'm Irish. And no, I'm not. <laughs> um, love you uh, love you guys. Can't wait to see Tim in Auckland. Much love, Simon. P.S. Bird is fat and sorry about the ass crack. So he's Kiwi. And um, this, is a, this is a male that, tramp stamp. And that is very funny to be like, <sighs> here's my ethnicity. And it's like, no, I'm not. You're I'm, not even Irish. I'm not the ethnicity that is tattooed on my body. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the dude, tra I didn't even really know dudes that did tramp stamps. Yeah, I'm, no. I'm marveling right now at that. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty amazing. And Dov, you should get a black and proud tattooed on right above your ass crack. No joke. I was going to get th a thug life tattoo. Really? Uh-huh. Like, Where? Like Tupac, like over the stomach? No, no, no. Just like in really small cursive on my chest right here. <laughs> uh, when, when were you thinking of doing this? Like how long ago? I've been, I've had this idea since middle school. And it's stuck with you? Well, I'm just like... I'm going to keep recircling back to this idea until I think it's not stupid and then I won't get it. And like, I've still always thought it was funny and cool. Because it's stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you keep thinking it's stupid, you'll just keep fantasizing about it. Yeah, but what's crazy too is that I also use it as a litmus test. Like if I'm ever dating a girl, I'm like, I'm thinking of getting a thug life tattoo. She's like, you should get that right now. I'm like, oh, this bitch is a lunatic. I gotta yeah. get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> mental but issue. I still want it. But what yeah. would you tramp get? Stand. Um... The truth is I'm not into like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I just, I've seen dudes with tattoos where it looks like cool artwork. And I just, I mean, I would I only. I think you've got the answer on your chest. John Deere. It's your favorite. You're a man of the people. Fuck, I didn't, just, I can't believe I didn't see it. It's a, let everybody know. It would definitely, to, to me, it would definitely be the broken arm area. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I'm not into a jokey one. I don't think like to me it's like yeah. it's not. I some I know a lot of people that have them, and you know, but I, to me it wouldn't. I wouldn't do a jokey one. I don't think I would either. Yeah, maybe like mm, no, not even that. I was thinking like my kids' names, but even that. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> This is from Julia. Fuck. Drunkenly got my lightsaber tramp stamp when I was 18 <laughs> drunk and high because I went as, uh, what is it? Padme. Oh, Padme. Um, a medalla for Halloween. That's cool. It's got me a lot of free drinks over the years and a great combo starter. Yeah. So she's got dueling lightsabers. That's amazing. Um, that is, uh, <laughs> that's fucking, but that's kind of Julia. cool. Yeah. I think it's. Good morning, Julia. <laughs> I think uh, it's cool, and if you're a Star Wars fan, even yeah. cooler. I mean, it I kind of like it, though. I don't hate it. No, I don't hate it either. Yeah. Like, I hate my tram stamp, and I hate Kiss Me, I'm Irish. I mean, I think part of the thing is that hers, you know, you, you kind of get what they are. Like, at first, I'd be like, what is that? Is that an X? Are those baseball bats? And then you kind of go like, oh, those are lightsabers, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, she's getting somebody who likes it, for sure. Yeah, like, she could it go... It kind of... The message could kind of be though i want two dicks here right now you know? oh that's i never saw right? that i yeah. wonder if she thinks that i don't know if she thinks that dueling swords oh yeah that right? is like a, a thing dueling swords is a dick thing like i think if you're like the one guy you get there you'd be like hey am uh <laughs> am i missing something guy? here is there supposed to be another guy <laughs> and she's like actually there is yeah uh, um dang i like dueling right. swords oh this is this dueling is. lightsabers you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, that's shitty. What's up, Oh, Lam H? that's so shitty. Guess who that is? That's Chad's sister. No way! Yes. Oh, shit. Smart Chad's got a crazy sister. I present to you oh. the butt wings. 
Got this bad boy as my first tattoo when I was 16. The internet Hell told yeah. me the symbols mean angel. I asked a foreign exchange student at my high school and she confirmed <laughs> or pranked me. The artist kept making comments about my 16-year-old cheeks and later got fired. Unrelated probably, but I think it's for the best. I didn't really think about... Uh, I didn't really think through placing wings, not on my shoulder blades, right, but right above my crack. Now my ass is fly, and so are you. Enjoy. <laughs> Hashtag Team Chad or whatever. <laughs> Chad. Chad. I this told her is... she was playing with fire by <laughs> That's writing in here. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, But man. I will say, so this is the genre I was really looking for, which That's is like. much better than yours. Much better than yeah, mine. Yeah. But this is what I was looking for. It's like, I'm young. I want something meaningful. All of these are either drunk, high, <laughs> very young, or all three. <laughs> right. Nick, you don't get a tram stamp when you're 46 and you have two kids and a mortgage, right? Chad, do you remember when she got it? Uh, Not the exact time. I mean, she was like 16 when she got it, but yeah. she like also had like her, she got her belly button pierced. Yeah. And I had my lip pierced, so we were all kind of, we were all oh, doing wow. kind of. Yeah. What's her name? Her first name? Uh, uh, Allie or Allison? Allison. Yeah. I love you, Allison. You're my kind of gal. Cool. Yeah, she uh, she got a, she's got a bunch of tats. She does. She has a lot of actually cool ones, not yeah. just this crazy <laughs> ass wing one. Very Dude, cool. ass wings is this is exactly I what I'm looking for. That's the thing that I do like. You know, I was I've obviously I've never I never gotten a tattoo, but I do love that they do. <laughs> they are markers of something in your life. You know, yeah. it's a, like this is a, sto it's a story forever and ever. It's like, well, this is what happened when I was 16. You know, mm -hmm. and there's a story that marked on you forever. That mm -hmm. part I like. My problem is, um, it's just that over the years you change what your markers and your symbols become yeah. and. Now they're, it's deeply embarrassing. I was like, I was born in Year of the Dragon, 76, I'm a dragon. It's like, okay. Yeah. Now I'm 46. I'm like, that's fucking dumb. I don't care. I don't, the, even worse is like, I'm a Gemini. Like, oh God, how many Gemini tattoos are out there? Yeah. Or butterflies, or yeah. dolphins, or, and I don't know. I just, I get embarrassed about the past, you know? You're like, oh, God, it's so yeah. so gay. I'm glad that I never succumbed to God, butt wings the all-time work. Because I could have fallen into this. I didn't. Yeah. But I could have fallen into the absolute most embarrassing tattoo for a man. Barbed wire? Yes. Yeah. That one's, because that's so Florida. It's very Florida. <laughs> and I was in, don't forget, I was in Florida in high school with, you know, <laughs> With, with juice heads and like garbage yeah and white trash and <laughs> and football players and it's like guys who were built like that had them so you're like maybe that's cool like maybe that's what i should be aspiring to get and then i have a cousin with one <laughs> a guy I, yeah he has one and, and like and now he's like in his 50s and you're oh. like cool tat man. <laughs> yeah well the barbed wire <laughs> it's it is it is the mark of like you're you almost can't not be a douche like you if i know you, you have to go like if you've become a better person you have to remove it you know what i mean like you have to you have to have it removed. It's so awful. But it was so cool. Well, it looked cool it, as shit. It like, was so cool when it when came you're, out. When you're 15, like you're a 15 year old yeah. boy and you see a kid like a few years older and he's got barbed wire. It was really you're like, cool. Fuck yeah, man. That kid's a <laughs> badass, you know? <laughs> then it just, it just all went downhill. It just all fell apart. Because I remember, um, what's her name? Pamela Anderson. Remember yeah. she played the character Barb Wire. And I thought, oh, that. What? That's the name of the character? Yeah, Google it. It was a movie she did called Barb Wire. And she had the <laughs> tattoo. And I was like, that's dope. Like, yeah. she looks dope. And she was dating Tommy Lee. Yeah. And she was like, I mean, look how cool she looks. Well, here's, you know what the thing is about it? I think if we're really being honest about it. Is that she was so rad? If you're like the amongst the first few guys to do that, like if if it didn't become a trend, yeah, it probably remains a pretty badass thing, right? Like if you're yeah. the first guy that goes, I want barbed wire around my my bicep, that's like, oh, that's that's probably what like that is a cool thing. It's like the guy who put the the lock chain around his yeah, neck, right? That's dope. But once it picks up, it's like when a song is cool and then it's not cool because. Once your your mom knows how to do the dance yeah. to it, you're like, this is not a cool song. It's anymore. over. Right? So 
It's it's probably that was that it just became too widespread. Yes. Too many people, and then you know douchebags start to do it. So then it <laughs> it takes away whatever cool points it had. You know. I agree. The douchebag uniform back in that era, it was the barbed wire tattoo, the puka shell necklace. Remember when everyone was wearing like the shell necklace? Mm. Yeah. So gay. So gay. And then Tevas. You had to wear Tevas to comp to completely polish off the douchebag look. Personally, I was always on the back of a John Deere and I never really <laughs> Salt of the Earth. Yeah. I was usually doing yard work. Yeah. I don't really know. Just mowing the lawns. But these praying guys were to doing. God, praying to Jesus. Mm hmm mm -hmm. Uh, uh, anyway, keep please keep sending in your tram stamps. I cannot I couldn't love this more. And I'm thinking that we should give the winner, if they want it, I guess, a, a removal, right? Oh, my God. I mean, I would like to. And maybe the, does the audience vote or something? Like, how do we determine? I mean, a removal if you want it removed. That's true. Maybe they don't. I mean, butt wings is hands down. Like my Here's my sense. I and, and, like and that. And Chad, you tell me if I'm wrong. It's horrible. I, my sense is that your sister, Allie, would never have it removed. No. I don't think she would. Yeah. No, it's part yeah, of her it's now. It's part of her story. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. There's people like, she's in it. She's like, she's the real deal. Cause she's got good ones too. It's not like she's <laughs> yeah. got the, the one who, person who wants it removed is the person who has one bad one. <laughs> like just one tattoo that sucks. But if you actually have some cool ones, you're like, here's my shitty one. Here's my first uh, yeah, few. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, anything, she'd add to it or yeah. like, yeah. 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 Well, you know what I really enjoy actually are my scars. I love scars. I don't mind my scars yeah, either. Yeah, I think those are cool because those really do tell a story of your life. Like, yeah. that's why I fell down. This is surgery. This is you know, whatever. Yeah. Getting too drunk at Lollapalooza. And like, those are fun. Yeah. But this this dumb shit I did to myself, bro. Like, that's why I feel so fucking stupid. Yeah. Hey, live, hey, laugh, man. love. What else can you do? Live, and laugh, that's a good love. tattoo as well. That, if you have a live, laugh, love <laughs> tattoo... I'll just tell you right now, the contest is over. You, you do win. You win whatever you fucking want. I love Alaska too. Oh I Alaska's mean, incredible. Incre it's so big. But you see, like he how as so a dude, hard. like he, he should never so get that removed. No, right? that's rad. But if she, if if that were a woman, I would actually reach out and be like, "Look, I'm really. I know you you made a huge mistake, and." I want to help you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's so different between the genders. Babe, what would you what would you have done if we started dating and you're so you're super into me? I take my clothes off and it's just Cali, Cali uh, vibes. Yeah, I would know something's really wrong. I, I would, <laughs> yeah, I really, I I would have told my friends I was like I was with a fucking lunatic last night and yeah. like you know I like her and stuff, but I would I would think that it suggests so much that I don't know. That I, I I think I just would have been like, this is pretty. Like it's too dark. The past is way deep. Like to get that, like to have huge Cali tattoo across your back, I'd be like, man. <laughs> or like like she's the so LA, troubled. Yeah. The, the Estevan Oriol like gangbanger fingers. My maybe I try it. Hands. Maybe like God, for a, I love maybe that. for like a month. I'm like I'm with this fucking real streetwalker. You know, it's like. Kind of, I kind might of get the Estevan Oriol LA. I like that. Where on your hand? My tramp stamp to cover. Oh, to cover. Maybe I if you. I could. Yeah. That would. I love his the LA fingers so much. Yeah. Estevan. Yeah. Estevan, I love your LA fingers, bro. Yeah. I tried to buy a Prince, but they sold out so fast. Oh, it's so good, and I even I like the drawing of it. And I get, I he get the made hats that and the thing? He took a photograph of these, this girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he put it on, you know, t-shirts and it was a famous photo. He's a famous photographer. Yeah. Um, we have a, I just bought a print of his of yeah. LA. We also it's have in our house. On, he's in the mural. I, oh yeah. He's yeah. In the, you're in my mural. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. No. Very he's cool. to me just such a part of that city. Anyway. Um, I have an eye mask update. Wow. The, Big time. The bougiest thing a person can. And he's got my back on this. Personally, as a tractor guy, I've never tried it. But <laughs> tell me about it. Back on the farm. Yeah. When you slept on a bale of hay. Well, the thing is, when the sun comes out, we know it's time to get up. You know what I mean? <sighs> That's right. Yeah, do work. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You yeah. sleep in. Uh, I know it's time to milk them chickens. Go ahead. <laughs> so I... Uh, 
I purchased a pair on Amazon that I thought were pretty highfalutin. Um, I spent $15 and they're like cups that go over your eyes so that they don't mush your eyes yeah. in. Uh-huh. Bro. Okay. I, I like the darkness that they provided. However, around two in the morning, I woke up and my fucking eyelids were sweating. Bro. Yeah. And if you remember, my fucking if eyelids. You, if you do recall, we could go to the tape. We can go to the tape. <laughs> I told you they sell cooling sleep masks. It's exactly <laughs> for this purpose. Because some people just the fabric alone sweat. makes them yeah I too sweat. warm. Yeah. And you put a there's a cooling gel so it stays nice and cool. But, but let me ask you the this. The whole fucking night. <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask you this. Can you kick my, my ass? ass? What? Is that bro, if it's cooling ice gel, homie, then once that cooling gel stops being cool, is the plastic gonna sweat? Is it does the plastic because it's in plastic, no? No, no, no. no, no. You're not, you're not going to feel plastic on your face. The cooling <laughs> gel is within a fabric that is comfortable to feel on your face. It's okay. A, it's a cloth-like fa- fa- fabric, yeah. Okay. And are you familiar with a brand? Do you do this? Do, do you I know do the, the brands offhand? No. no but I'm asking you, do you do cooling gel? I've had them. I've had them. The one that I, I you got me recently is the weighted one. Yeah. And that's currently my favorite. And uh, Do you it, tie it on your head? Like I just a lay ninja, it over. I just lay it over. And you my lay face. on your back, yeah. yeah, and then it just falls off naturally throughout the night. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can get one that straps on your head. Bro. Yeah, you can. Cool. cool. Oh, maybe that's what therapy. I get. Yeah, that's what you need. Uh, okay, but oh, I have so many stupid questions already. <laughs> but if it's weighted, how, do I have to tie it tightly around? No, my you head? don't have to tie it tightly. Then no. it'll fall down if it's weighted. If it's heavy, it'll fall. Oh no! Fall I thought down. you wanted the cooling one. Yeah. The cooling one is just strapped, so. It's just like a regular sleep mask. You just put it on and, and you'll, you won't feel warm on your face. Yeah, because I woke up and my eyelids were sweating, which I, I didn't even think was possible. I know, I know. But this is, I promise you. So I get an infection, you I know. I promise you this will work out. Oh, there's, your, there's similar, similar to your. Um, the Al-Qaeda one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You look like you're being captured by the Taliban. I know, I know. So uh, I'm going to look into this further. It is a part of my new fancy lifestyle. Yeah. I do feel a little like a douchebag buying one. I do feel like it's like one of those really unnecessary things. But I think I'm you're out it. of your fucking mind. But you know what I did get that has changed my life, homie? What? what? You know what the fuck I'm going to talk about. What did I show you last night that I was really stoked about? Yeah. Your clock? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's really good. Okay. No, not just okay. It's a clock that fucking lights up different colors, homie. It has different meditations and shit. You and can you do. think you think a sleep mask is bougie? Okay. <laughs> I have a clock I mean, that changes lights and it's tells on me Amazon. message. Okay, I and know. it makes a sound like a baby. No, it it's makes cool, but la- rain sounds. Here's the thing. This is this is what I'm saying. This is the point I'd like to make. Sure, Your Honor. Sleep is so important. It is so you can never give enough credit or importance to what sleep does to you your quality of life i agree the length of your life the health of your life that anything you do to sleep better whether it's a mattress a mattress cover the sheets the pillows covering your eyes noise you hear clocks like whatever you do to make your sleep the best is worth it there's there is nothing that's silly about making a purchase that helps anybody sleep better. That's how important sleep is. I agree. Is. I agree with you. Okay, so I think it's fantastic that you bought that I agree. because it helps you may, sleep. May I, may I say why I feel, may I just elaborate and I thought about why. Okay. It's because in all the movies, it's always some bougie white blonde. I understand. It's like Kate Hudson, who's like, I got a mask on. Like, yeah. do her voice? I got a mask. I got a mask on. Yeah, it's always that girl. Yeah. She's always like the bitch in the movie, like, I got a mask on. Don't whack me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it has like princess on the thing. Sure. So I'm always like, ew, is that who wears? Yeah. I don't, I'm not in that. I don't want to be that. Yeah, but don't get a princess one. Just Fuck, get one no that princess says, anything. Like, Easy E had AIDS or something. Oh, you know, I like that, like that one. On and then, <laughs> like, they make that one, but AIDS. I think you could probably. <laughs> Or it, but um, that's kind of cool. You know, yeah. You you, you should always do <laughs> anything that helps your sleep life. Everybody sleep, should. Sleep life. Yeah, yeah. Sleep life. There you go. That's tight. 
Yeah. Now I'm thinking about bringing back this tamp stamp, tramp stamp, tramp stamp. I'm thinking about bringing it back. Sleep is underrated, just like weather is. I'm sorry. Weather is underrated when people are like, oh, you know, it's just it's whatever. True. It's cool. It's like no, no, that's underrated. It's weather dictates the way you live, approach the day, your whole like. Yeah, it, if you live somewhere with great weather, that you should talk about it every fucking day. It's amazing that you get that. I know. And when you do things that help you sleep well, it's like that's you're. You're, you're now a one percenter. You're in one percent of the people that actually have done the things to maximize something that's going to change the a complete quality of your life. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you need to do to sleep better. So you're saying I have permission to buy a nice sleep mask, Tom. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Go for it. Thank you. Go for it. Get as many sleep masks as you want. Thank you. For sure. Thank you. One time, I think uh, not too long ago, as we were, you were falling asleep, I was still awake. I actually woke you up and you were like, what? I go, I just had this realization. <laughs> oh my God. And you go. I forgot about this. I blocked this out. <laughs> I go, I just God. realized how much my dad really liked big tits. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, thank you for telling me that. <laughs> and I go, no, but I, I put together mm -hmm why I made the realization mm. and why it's different than me. Mm. Because to him, mm. there was specifics in what he liked about tits. Mm. And to me, I don't, I don't care. In other words, mm. I can appreciate, I, if you go, there's, this lady has big tits. I'm like, that's cool. This lady has mid-sized tits, cool. This lady has really small tits, I don't care. <laughs> I've, I've been with women with like all different Hungry sizes. Tits, and guess what? sloppy tits. It doesn't actually affect me one way or another. And wow. I, I had that realization that like, man, my dad really liked big tits. Mm -hmm. And I woke you up to tell you that. <laughs> You did because he he would all. Cause I realized how much he would talk about it. Oh, he loved talking about your mother's tits and just big tits. And, and if he saw big tits, he would always like hit me and he'd be like, "Look up, look at those big tits." And I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah." And he and he talked about cleavage. I like cleavage, you know. Right? <laughs> and so what I realize is that if if you're specific about something like that, that's when it's important to you. Mm -hmm. But I don't have the specific need to in order to feel excited that's my point so so but then yana so all these years later <laughs> is when i realized i'm not an actual tit guy that's, i was just gonna say that therefore all this a, adds up to i'm not a tit guy so what are you i'm i that's all i have listen in terms of what I have to offer. No, no, here's the thing. All I have are tits. The other, the ass is not there. What I don't I'm have saying great legs. I don't have is great that I'm actually. This any, is really bad for us, no, babe. No, it's not. What I'm saying is I'm the guy who goes, I'm happy with any type of tit. So I'm actually like, a, like more of like a man of the people when it comes the, to tits. The John Deere of tit lovers. I'm, yeah, I'm very much. Yeah. I'm a noble no, tit oh. lover. Yourself yeah. a pat on the back. Yeah. You love all sizes. Because I here's the thing. Yeah. If I what I realized <laughs> was like when I was when I had mm. been with mid size and small I never was like, oh, this is a, I wish I could have I, I, I wish they were different. I was always just like thrilled to be there, hmm. happy with what it was. It never swayed me one way or the other. Interesting because with peeners, I I off there was one I was like, I don't, I'm not, I'm just not into the shape and the size yeah. at all. Well, that makes sense. And I was like, but I'm not, then maybe I'm not a dick lover. Maybe I'm not a lover of all dicks. Right. Okay. I don't know. Because you know, what you're telling I me. I do think that there's a little difference in that the penis size has a direct connection to not just arousal, but to the actual function correct. of intercourse. Correct, correct, right? correct, correct. No, no, yeah, Breasts yeah, 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 yeah. are, mm -hmm. you, you don't need them to actually function They're in just intercourse. Aesthetic, They're yeah. just aesthetics, right? But like what I'm really getting at mm. is, man, my dad loves some big tits, mm -hmm. you know? And I think it's really cool that you know what made his dick hard. 
There's nothing better than knowing what arouses your father. Yeah. There's, it's really so important. Every kid should know what turns his dad on. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and in detail, too. In detail. Uh, he yeah. liked big bushes. And as I got older, it, it was so <laughs> wonderful to hear more and more, you know? Because that's when he saw you as a friend and not as a son anymore. Yes. And I'm glad that release was, <laughs> was given to me. Um, heard about bushes and just un, out of nowhere, you know, I, uh, I uh, went out with this gal, Sally, and uh, God, she could... He loved the, uh, it's, it's a overdone when he goes, she could suck a golf ball through a garden hose. And I was yeah. like, yeah. very cool. So you also learned very, how hard. You want the club sandwich? What do you want to get here? <laughs> and you got to learn that your dad enjoys blowjobs and That's vigorous something. ones yeah. too, which is <laughs> yeah, really yeah. neat. <laughs> that was cool to learn. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was really neat. It was neat. That is so gross to know what made your dad. Yeah. But he, ne he never let hard. too much time go by without reminding me about the tits. Yeah. You know? He was always, he even did it in front of me. You know what I like? Because um, cleavage. I like cleavage. Cleavage, cleavage was big in my day. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> he would tell me okay. how, you know, society, culturally, things shifted. Where now, I mean, now you open your phone and you can just on Instagram, see a girl who you can see the outline of her cooch. Yeah. Right. So things have obviously gone you know, pretty dramatically uh, another way. But in his day, right, a kid who was born in the 40s, mm -hmm. this means that you're growing, like you're a, a teen in like the late 50s oh or in my the 60s. God. When you saw just cleavage, in other words, just the outline, the shape of breath, the tease of that there's breasts here, that to him was just the most exciting thing. So he still talked, so he would just bring up how much he loved cleavage. And I would always say, as your son, thank you for telling me. <laughs> thank you for letting me know that. It's cool. And then would you share what made your dick hard? Nope. <laughs> I would never. Like, really, Dad? Well, what I like is a little nipple. Well, first of all, I, I know like what he would say. The nipple. If I would have told him what, I, what turns me on, he would go, yeah, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really into that. Yeah. <laughs> and that would have been the conversation. And I don't want to have that. I never wanted to have that conversation. Yeah. You know what makes me come, Dad? <laughs> But that's what you got to do now. You got to let your parents know because you got to be out and proud. But uh, uh, I, I do recall, uh, as I recall, uh, your mother one time asked me to take her bra shopping mm. when she came to visit. And I had her properly fitted for a bra. Your dad was so upset with me. Remember, he was and he's never been he was never mad at me that one time. He was mad at me because I messed with his tit show. Yeah. And he said, I like it that your mother walks around with her her hangers out. And I ruined for him. And he said that to me. You Basically, you ruined my tit Isn't show. That tit parade. I like it when your mother's tits are Just hanging out. Dangling dangling, and dangling hanging, out. Yeah, yeah. That's what he enjoyed. And I, I robbed him of that. Yeah, I like her tits. Mm -hmm. He was really turned on by your mother's tits. Yeah. Like really into them. That's mm. what did it for him. I, I was 43 like, when I came to the realization that I'm not a tit guy. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a dedicated. Like, in other words, it's not the thing, right? It's not That's the what I thing. Mean. It's not your he big is, thing. He was, he was that guy. I wish I would have said it at his memorial service. <laughs> I always wish. I always thought that would have been like, I mean, I know that's the comic in me, but I just thought. Yeah. It would have been something if everybody was like, oh, that's his son. And I'd be like, you know, my father, <laughs> he really loved big tits. Uh, <laughs> and you just see people go, like, what are you doing? I'm like, what? <laughs> he told me all the time. <laughs> but the people who knew him would be like, that's true. It's he true. He really did. All the time. That was, that's Tom. That's Tom. Yeah. Tom Segura. <laughs> likes big tits. And that ain't no shit. And that ain't no shit. Yeah. 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 Did yeah. you ever hear a cool thing that turned your dad on? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, um, God, I. So where do I begin? I, I've talked about this somewhere. My mom's at. Um, what was really neat about my upbringing is that there was always a Playboy magazine in the bathroom from the time I was like seven. That's and good. Then, good for a girl. This is super cool. And then um, 
child, hyper, like hyper a child sexual should do that. area. Yeah. yeah, like we had naked lady wallpaper in the bathroom. Cool. So I remember taking a shit and like this is before cell phones. You know, you, you just look at like shampoo bottles when you would take a shit. Yeah. And what was cool for me is I could take a dump and then look at like adult naked. women nude in like a menagerie of yeah. naked lady wallpaper. Remember yeah. that seventies like yeah. horrible like kind of like this but naked ladies. Yeah. Um, there was a Rubik's cube in my dad's bar area that each side was a different naked woman. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, it's very conflicting for me because I'm like, oh, Rubik's Cube, that's yeah. not for me. You know, yeah. like quickly traumatized by sure. the naked t uh, chicks. Um, he, I think he liked tits. I'm tits. gonna say he's a tit guy. Uh, oh, wait a minute, because my mom had big ones. My stepmom didn't. And my new mom, I don't know. Mm. Cause you know, I'm going to guess she doesn't, she's <laughs> but, um, yeah, go to the Philippines when you are <laughs> sick of being told you're not good enough. <laughs> uh, what about you, Nadav? You had a cool dad. Yeah, your dad um, tell you, you ever learn some cool sexual things you liked? <laughs> That's a telling sigh. Yeah. There was one time where he just casually mentioned, he was just like, you know, I really like butt fucking. Do you ever, do you like anal sex? And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk about this. I don't this. want to talk about, I don't this, want to talk yeah. about this. And then yeah. after him and my mom divorced, my dad all of a sudden started taking yoga. Oh, yeah. And then he would tell me, he's like, took another one down this week, Nadav. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like, just took down his entire yoga class. And then once he finished, he was not interested in yoga anymore. Holy <laughs> shit. He must have had some real game, though, to pull that off, right? Oh, he was very likable. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's a very, very charming dude. <laughs> yeah. Ew, I have, a, I have a memory. So, okay, so my dad would go to Club Med, which in its origins was a French swingers club. That's how Club Med started. It was literally yeah. 50 people on a beach, like the movie The Beach. You go to, like, a private area. It's limited to, like, 50 or 75 people, and you fuck all week long. And then Club Med later became a family brand. Now it is a family brand. But early in its inception was that. It's the French. It's the French. It's a yeah. French club. And so by the time I was like 11, 10, around there, my dad would take me to Club Med with him. And that's when it was halfway for adults, halfway to family vibes. Yeah. So I was still dancing with sailors and naked French people, and it was completely inappropriate. So one time my dad went to Martinique, which was notorious for being like the fuck club. Yeah. Like, you fuck hard. You go to the Martinique Club Med to fuck, because it's an adults only Club Med. And I, I remember when I was in the DR with him, I was 20 years old, and I was like, remember when you used to go to Club Med like in the day, bro. And I'm talking like peak AIDS time too. Like, let's be real, like the mid eighties, you know what I mean? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I go like, how many women did you sleep with? Like just roughly, he's like, ah, maybe two or three a day. And I was like, whoa. So I know how much, I mean, I don't know what makes my dad's dick hard, but I know that my dad's dick was hard. All the time. All the time. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. That's very cool. <laughs> it's very cool to know Basically, that. Basically, it's what doesn't make my dad's dick hard yeah. would be the surprising factor. That's very cool. It's a lot. Yeah. It's, it's Two to three a day? Yeah. I mean, we were shocked by that girl's video that we watched where she gives us like the, the year in recap. Yeah. Of how many guys and women she's been with and the how she fucking met them. saddest I've been in a while. <laughs> I don't know what like that make that video really affected you. Yeah. I think it shifted from humor to total sadness for mm -hmm. me. And why is that? I don't know. I think there was like um it's what also makes like you can argue that it's funny and also sad. At yeah. the, it's it's that like there was, like, at first, I think it was, it was that uh, it, when it kept going, and I was like, oh. <laughs> you mean she has, like, the three right. different screens? There was screen. a PowerPoint what is it? presentation. PowerPoint, yeah, three different, yeah. And I think you can just, um, God. I think you go, oh, man, this person has, like, the older you get, you, you just, I think you start to see things a little differently, right? And you go, man, she's got like something 
that she's um, not addressing inside of her to do this. And like, I, well, I, well, at first I was like, this is funny. The, the more it went on, I was like, she was like, pretty proud of that. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. I, I think this is the kind of thing that, you know, you look back, like she'd look back on and be like, that was a, uh, that was it. There's no doubt in my mind that at some point you'd be like, that that wasn't a fantastic it was time in my life. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Yeah, because I think sex is, uh, I mean, it can be used like anything else. Like any drug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like someone being like, so this week I, uh, I drank 19 bottles of gin <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah. that was pretty cool. Uh, I went through 23 bottles of tequila. And you're like, you know, at first you're like, you guys are real animal. And then they keep breaking it down. And then they're like, I, uh, I puked 16 times. <laughs> uh, I passed out on the street four right. times. Uh, a couple people pissed on me while I was on the street. Like, it was like that yeah. kind of where you're like, the more it's going on, you're like, man. Cool stats. Yeah. But it's what's the difference with us nowadays is that people celebrate uh, promiscuity like it's yeah. now it's like good for you sex positive like i don't know that borders on not sex positive i don't i don't i think like everybody is entitled to it i don't really buy the um the whole well the thing is is that um i just i was right you know i'm i grew up in a place where like i don't view sex the same way it's like i think we're all pretty much biologically designed a certain way <laughs> And um, while some people lean a little more this and that, when it gets to a level like to that, you're there's a disconnection come like between you yeah. and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, like I don't see it any differently than I would somebody who, like I said, would talk about booze or drugs or any type of excess that is a true excess. Yeah, you like because here's the thing: when you when you've lived lo long enough, you know enough people who lived that life oh yeah and then you see them later and uh i can't tell you any of them that were like i'm so thrilled <laughs> about that time you know yeah, for sure. what they really wanted was to connect for sure with, they wanted with a connection humans. with someone oh and for like sure. you know not that like i'm not saying that everybody my feeling is that everyone should be one person and no they, no of no. course you, everybody goes through growth and experimenting and trying things, but you know, 55 tracking that down for a year. I don't know. I was just like, I'm kind of bummed out watching it. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of bummed me out. I, I, yeah. And I agree. I wasn't proud of her or happy for no. her. And I don't know, unless it was like, this is my year of fucking and maybe like, I'm going to try this, this, this hat on for sure. a year and, for a year. and maybe sure. I am. And yeah. then after this year, we're going to, we're going to pull back. Yeah. We're just going to, we're gonna pull back on this excessive because one a week is, I think, a, a new body a week is is, is it's excessive. excessive. Yeah. yeah, I mean, did you feel that way at all? No, like, how did it affect you? Yeah, yeah, it was like it wasn't. It was like she's having fun right now, but I, I think she's not going to look back on this and fondly. Yeah. Well, I will say that every girl that I've been friends with yeah. that was really, really, really super hypersexual, promiscuous back in college and yeah. then after college. And then what happens is they wake up somewhere in their mid to late thirties and they're like, why can't I find a husband? And it's like, well, you've kind of, you kind of shut the door on so many options by like living one way, you know, instead of looking for a husband, you were just looking for fun. And the guys that wanted to get married, the first draft picks, They've yeah. all been picked. Yeah. Second second draft, second rounders, yeah. they're gone too. So by the time you're in your late 30s, 40s as a woman and yeah. you want to have a baby in a, the normal life, yeah. those guys have already done that. Yeah, I mean- Now you're old. I get what you're saying. I mean, it's important to point out that it's not, um, it's not impossible to find- great picks in your late 30s and into your 40s no. and into your 50s like no. you can find all those things but i think the um the the like the empty pursuit of the number chasing the body count chasing yeah. that she was on that's the part where i go regardless of age where you're like i i get it for like like you said for a minute like you're you know you you want to experiment you want to try something but i think thinking of it as like an endless cycle I mean, you're like so that's empty. kind of it it's feels empty because at the end of the day like if you look at somebody like my father he ended up married a few times yeah like they ultimately want but that whole is one it's, person it's never but it's like he, him as an example that it's never been 
It's fulfilled. never going to fill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's not, a, like, that's the thing. Somebody who does that, this is really, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Somebody who does that, you know, after you've hit a certain age and you've lived a certain life, you know that they're not addressing something, an issue, in, an issue Yeah, exactly. Of that's exactly. really, that's where the sadness comes from. Yeah. It, like, with him and with, people that I've met is that they go like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not addressing something. Yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. Yeah. Cause and, a lot of times and, they end up these like older, older guys or ladies yeah, and, and they're sad. like, I'm alone. I'm sad. And I, I never addressed this issue. I never addressed the issue. And now it's, too, and that's, but look for women, it is a biological issue to having kids. There is a time window. So very quickly. Cause I know we have to wrap this yeah. up. Um, I found something as, and here's my, I guess this is my Valentine's gift to you. Okay. So just, if you would look at the screen. I would love, I'm excited. I, I'm more amazed by the jump. The jump was cool. I mean, to, fought, do you to think, what, land do you think on your feet uh, like that. Oh, that's it's all she's got? No. Look at her I smile. I love her. Look how happy she I is. I love farts and poopies. Yeah. yeah. It's, it makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so blessed. <laughs> Hold on. Ah, uh, she's one of those chicks. Mm. <laughs> and uh, I knew two things. I knew this would make you happy, and I knew it would turn any yeah. on. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> I knew he was like, yeah. what's her number? Do you know? She so uh, her name well. is uh, Lily. Uh, she goes by Stinky Lily V, I think. L yeah. Uh, she's right. a lady after in my heart. Yeah, I, I knew it. I yeah, knew she's you rad. would en enjoy this. So happy Valentine's happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day, baby. That was a beautiful um, present. Thank you. All right, we got to wrap it up. I love it. We'll see you next time. Big titted animal. You big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted animal. You big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted animal. What's for dinner, you big titted animal? Big titted animal. You big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted animal. Hey, you big titted animal. Come here, you big titted, 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 big titted animal. Big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted animal. Big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted animal. Big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted animal. Big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted, big titted animal. You big titted animal. All right, all right. The big titted animal challenge. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. The big titted animal challenge. What? Very cool. The big titted animal challenge. That was great. You fucker. That was great. That was great. Hey, 
you just watched a full episode of your mom's house. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you didn't, watch another one. Maybe you'll like that one. They're everywhere. Look, I don't know. They place them in like cubes, squares, whatever it is. Just click another one. Maybe you'll find someone you like or someone will get hurt. <laughs>